Hey friends, welcome back to another video. Today, let's talk about summer TBR. Now for the months of June, July, and August, I'm not gonna do monthly TBRs. Instead, I'm just gonna do a seasonal summer TBR because if you watched my May wrap ups, clearly I am into mood reading and not really sticking to a TBR. So I thought for the summer, which is my favorite season to just fill it up with a pile of possibilities. I made a summer TBR last year. I'll link that video above. And I've actually read six of the 10 books. Four, I did not get to. One, I'm not really interested in reading anymore but three of them I still have here and I still want to read all of them and so I thought I'll just start with these and adding these to this year's TBR because I'm also kind of in a check stuff off the list mood at the same time so I want to have these read so that I won't have anything lingering from that TBR. The first one is Florence Adler Swims Forever. This is a historical fiction about a young woman who wants to swim across the English Channel and this is kind of like a family secrets story set in 1934 in it. Atlantic City. Another historical fiction set in 1959 in Africa about a missionary family and all of the repercussions of what they're doing. Mostly bad, I think. And then finally, this book is one of the first books that I got at Goodwill since starting booktube, a true crime nonfiction about the Osage Nation, which is about an indigenous community in Oklahoma and the FBI investigating a bunch of murders that happened. A movie about this is supposedly coming out with Leonardo DiCaprio, but I've had this book on way too many TBRs and I really need to get it read. So those three are lingering from last year that I would love to cross off the list. Since we're talking about mood reading, the next thing that I've been loving is classics. So I have a few pretty ambitious goals. The first one is to ideally read all of the Jane Austens. Now, that sounds a little bit ridiculous. I think there's six main novels in total. I've read two so far, Pride and Prejudice and Emma. The next one I for sure want to read is Mansfield Park because I own that one. And I actually do really like the movie. So would love to read the book. And then the fourth one I would love to read is Persuasion because the new Netflix adaptation is coming out in July. Then I heard that there is a Lord of the Rings readathon happening. And it's been one of my goals to get through those books. I started the Fellowship of the Ring last year, got 20% of the way through and then just stopped. So I would love to not only continue, but finish that entire series. And then the last class that I would love to get to the summer and there's a huge readathon happening with a bunch of people in the book due community and that is with The Count of Monte Cristo which has been on my TBR for also way too long one of my favorite movies I know the movie's different than the book I still want to read it I feel like I'm gonna love this story so I would love to read alongside this summer I'll link those readathons that are happening down below that I have heard of that have piqued my interest that I would love to join in on if you're at all curious about them and if you have watched my May wrap-ups clearly I'm in a contemporary mood I would never previously consider myself a contemporary reader. I'm not really drawn to those stories. I much prefer historical fiction, but that may be changing because I'm clearly loving contemporary stories right now and actually historical fiction, I've been very hesitant and not really wanting to pick up. I don't know if that's gonna change and if I'll just go back to being my normal self. But I have a few contemporary books that I have on my shelves and that's one of my goals to read more books off my shelves. All of these sound interesting. In May, I read another Leanne Moriarty, What Alice Forgot and I loved it so much. So I have two other of her books that I own that I would love to read. The Husband's Secret about a woman whose husband disappears or either dies and leaves a note and something mysterious is going on. And then the other Leanne Moriarty is the hypnotist love story about a woman who's a hypnotherapist recently starts dating someone and turns out that his ex-girlfriend is stalking him and potentially stalking this hypnotherapist now. So a little creepy, little funky, maybe love triangle psycho ex-girlfriend situation. I don't know, but kind of sounds fun. I've heard nothing but fantastic things about The Dry by Jane Harper about a detective in Australia Krista from Books and Jams loves these. My friend Lily recently read this and loved it, so I've heard nothing but great things. Both of these authors I mentioned as new to me authors I'd love to try in 2022, and these are the most summary looking ones by this author, Commonwealth by Ann Patchett, I believe like a family story. The Book of Two Ways also feels very summary by Jodi Picoult. Would love to give them a try since I'm in a contemporary mood. This next pile of possibilities are all historical fiction, which I love. And don't get me wrong, I'm not not reading historical fiction, but I'm also not like dying to pick up historical fiction right now. I'm much more intrigued by contemporary books. But I think that might change, hopefully, because I also have a ton of historical fiction that I'd love to read. These are the ones that I've pulled off my shelves that feel very summery. The first one is Firefly Lane by Kristen Hanna. I've now read three Kristen Hanna books. 
The Nightingale, loved. The Great Alone, thought was great. The Four Winds was fine. This one I thought was a contemporary book, but it turns out it's historical fiction. It's set in the 1970s. And I believe this is a really good book about female friendship, maybe sisterhood. I'm not sure. I know there's a Hulu series about it. And also I have never seen fireflies before. I think it's just the thing in like the South or somewhere, but we don't have fireflies in Oregon. And I, it's on my bucket list to see one because I think it'd be really cool. So this just felt summery because I know fireflies. I think they come out mostly in summer. I'm not sure, but would love to try another Kristen Hanna. She seems to be a bit of a hit or miss for me, so I don't know. This next historical fiction is set in Hawaii and just feels very summery, Molokai, and this is about a leper community in Hawaii, and it is set in the 1890s. This next one is set in 1960s in the Dominican Republic, In the Time of Butterflies by Julia Alvarez. I like the diversifying of locations. You know, it's not just set in the US or in the UK. This one has summer in the title, and that is Monsoon Summer by Julia Gregson. I scored this one in a little free library and it looked like a typical historical fiction. But this premise actually sounds kind of interesting. It's set in 1947, post the Second World War, and it is about a woman that marries an Indian man and kind of like the tension of that culture change between the two families. Powerful story of secrets, nature of home, comforts and frustrations in family, and how far we'll go for the ones we love. And then because it's summer and I did it last summer, I would love to make another bee themed video because I have many bee books that I need to read. This one being at the top of the list and that is The Murmur of Bees by Sofia Segovia. This is a little bit of a speculative magical realism about a young child that is found to be covered in bees and then he's like able to communicate and speak with bees. Also set during the 1918 like flu epidemic in the country of Mexico. Those are some of the books. I probably just should have stuck with 10 more books that I want to read this summer, but instead I have all these random pile of possibilities. But that's just sort of the mood I'm in right now. I also have a ton of books that feel summery that are on all of my goals, like classics I want to read and fiction I want to read, nonfiction I want to read, authors I want to try this year. I made all of those videos at the beginning of the year or end of last year. I'm now looking back at those and I haven't really been making a ton of good progress. So I'm looking at my book cart and I really want to read a lot of those as well. So I'm just really keeping it open. You'll have to see what I read in my monthly wrap-ups because anything can happen at this point. I would also love to participate in Beautiful Minutia's Summer Book Bingo, which is a fun little bingo board. I also know that Lindsay and Sarah are hosting a book list summer bingo and my own library where I work has an adult bingo board. There's a lot of bingo potential happening and maybe with what I'm reading and with the amount that I'm reading these days, I might be able to really get some and bingos across all three of those separate bingo boards. Something's planned, something's mood reading. We'll just see what happens and I'm very excited for this summer. Let me know what you're most looking forward to this summer. I am a summer gal through and through. I just thrive when it's sunny and hot and you can just be outside. And we've had a miserable, miserable spring here. All of February through May has been just the wettest, grossest, grayest spring in Oregon. So it's June, the sun is shining, it is supposed to rain tomorrow and I'm sad, but I'm hoping for sun to stay a little longer and I'm hoping for some wonderful reading this summer as well. But I appreciate you guys tuning in today and I'll see you guys in more videos soon. Bye!